Platinum Silicone Cure Inhibition. What it is, why it happens, and how to avoid it. What is cure inhibition? Cure inhibition is when your mold material fails to cure on the surface or all the way through. While cure inhibition can happen with any mold material, platinum silicones are the most common victims of this problem. Cure inhibition happens when a contaminant, either on the pattern surface or mixed into the mold material, prevents the material from properly curing. In this tutorial, we will discuss the common contaminants and how you can make sure to avoid cure inhibition with your platinum silicone on critical projects. Now, some of you may be asking yourselves, why use platinum silicones at all if there's any risk of contamination? Isn't it expensive and just a lot of unnecessary trouble? Well, platinum systems have come a long way in the last 25 years. Most platinum systems are easy to use. Many are one-to-one -one mix ratio. They're extremely accurate allow for more casting options, have better physical properties, and hold up better in production. And they're right around the same price as a good tin cure formula. Making a good platinum silicone mold will allow you to cast more accurate parts, especially interlocking parts, and allow for casting aliphatic clear systems without surface inhibition of the clear resin. Platinum silicone systems are a critical part of the effects trade, the product development world, and the medical simulator industry. Now first, it is important to know the common contaminants for platinum silicone. The top five contenders are clay containing sulfur, tin cure silicones, incompatible or uncured primer or sealer, some SLA materials, vulcanized or latex rubber, and of course polyurethane rubber. Now this is not a complete list, but these are the top offenders that can be easily avoided. When a mold must be made from these surfaces, it is best to use a tin cure system like TC5024. If a platinum silicone mold is required for the casting material, a resin pattern can be cast from the tin cure mold and then remolded with a platinum silicone. This is not ideal, but it is sometimes the only way around the contaminated surface. Since it is impossible for any manufacturer to provide a list of all the ways not to make a mold, it is important to learn the common contaminants and the problem solving process of how to check for contaminants. When you're about to start a critical mold project, line up all the surfaces the wet silicone will contact during the mold making process. This will include any resin parts, 3D printed materials, painted or primed materials, clay, hot glue, tape, and anything else to be used. The two 3D printed patterns here are a PLA part and a semi-rigid part from an object printer. I primed the PLA pattern with high build primer for this test. SEM high build primer works great and is compatible with most platinum formulas, provided you allow it to dry and cure completely before molding. I waited about a day to mold this primed part. Now mix up a small batch of the silicone you will be using for your mold process. Now this is uber important as different platinum silicones with different set times and different physical properties will have different levels of sensitivity to contaminants. Personally, I like to add a little bit of color to my translucent silicone and also some thickener. The thickener allows us to test vertical surfaces and eliminates the need to make little mini poured molds of each surface. Here I am mixing up a small batch of TC5130F. This is a fast setting 25A platinum silicone that is ideal for fast molds and for silicone casting applications. Be as accurate as possible and be sure to use compatible thickener and compatible silicone pigment. Otherwise your results will be useless. Once thoroughly mixed and thickened with the TC5001 thickening agent, apply a small glob of silicone to each surface. Most of these test pieces are non-critical scraps from around my shop. If you are testing the surface of a critical piece you will be molding later, be sure to run the test on an inconspicuous part, like the base, so it is easy to clean later if there is a cure issue. This object Game of Thrones piece is a good example. Be sure to also leave some silicone in the mixing cup. This is your control and will give you a reference point later. Once you have applied silicone to each surface, allow the silicone to set completely. For TC5130F, we have a 7 to 8 minute working time and about an hour to an hour and a half demold at room temperature. Really important, remember that low temperature can also create opportunities for cure inhibition. So always work at 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit or room temperature or warmer. 
Once the silicone cures, we can check the results. First, check your mixing cup, then move on to the individual surfaces. Carefully peel off the silicone and check the surface that was in contact with the pattern surface. Severe cure inhibition will cause the silicone not to cure at all. Surface inhibition will result in a tacky, uncured layer where the silicone contacted the contaminated pattern. Mild cure inhibition will result in a slightly tacky surface. As you see from our tests, only the hot glue resulted in mild surface inhibition. Since the hot glue will only be used to glue together our mold box, we can proceed. In my experience, some hot glues will slightly inhibit some platinums and some have no effect at all. Make sure you test the brand of hot glue you will be using. Remember that consumer products like hot glue will change formulas without warning as the purpose of the product is a craft glue and is not marketed as a mold making product. Now that the results are in, we are ready to mold the primed PLA part. I am pouring this mold with more TC5130F silicone as that is the silicone that I tested. Remember that different silicones may be more or less sensitive depending on the formulation. As the saying goes, buy cheap, buy often. Remember that the amount of silicone required for this kind of test is minimal. I used around 80 grams for this test. This is a small but critical investment in your mold success. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you will be molding a mixed media piece made by someone else or a pattern with known contaminants, make your mold with a tin cure formula like TC5024. If the final casting material requires a platinum mold, such as water clear 786 resin, you can then cast a pattern of TC804 or similar resin and remold it with a platinum system. Yes, this is an extra step, but better to mold it twice and have a backup mold than take a chance and have an expensive failure and a gooey pattern that must be cleaned. Now, if you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and share. And of course, click the little bell icon so you're notified when I post new content. I'll put some additional mold making resources on the end screen, so be sure to check those out too. And of course, thanks for watching.